And today I'm going to be talking about um, a tool, an IMLS funded um, grant project uh, in New York University. And I'm presenting on behalf um, of a team of folks um, that you can see on this slide, um, including Vicki Steves, also at NYU, um, Fernando Shiragati, Remy Rampin, um, and Brian Hoffman, who is an independent contractor on this project. Um, so our project is called Saving Data Journalism, and it's, um, it uses a reproducibility, an open source reproducibility software tool called ReproZip um, to capture and um, capture dynamic websites, in particular data journalism websites, um, for future reuse and for preservation. Um, so um, what, our, what, what are we talking about when we talk about data journalism and what um, the data journalism community refers to as news applications or news apps. Um, these are interactive and exploratory news websites um, that are built by often major newsrooms like the um, Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, and then a lot of um, digital startups like, for instance, 538. And they look kind of like this. This is a news application where you can, um, an older news application now, um, that the LA Times built several years ago, um, where you could put in your address and see how long, for instance, it takes for the LAFD, the Los Angeles Fire Department, to respond to a call where you live. So it's stuff like this. Probably most of you are familiar with this kind of content. Um, this content differs from other types of content, other types of born digital news, in that it's reliant on a database often, and that they're interactive and exploratory, and they have all of these. Um, dynamic elements. Um, how many of these things are out there? Uh, the short answer is just a lot. <laughs> um, this is why we wanted to, to focus on, on data journalism because it's such a growing um, type of journalism. Um, there are newsrooms all internationally that are um, publishing these types of websites. And the problem is that these these types of data journalism stories cannot be archived or captured um, in any systematic way. Um, so this is the problem that our team has been trying to solve. Um, I, I, this is a little bit of the why, why this is such a problem. Um, dynamic, dynamic websites can't be fully captured by current web archiving technology because um, they, they rely on these kind of complex stacks of software and web crawlers are mostly designed for the static internet. Um, some of the older interactives uh, would need emulated browsers to fully display. And also an issue is that newsrooms are such volatile organizations. They're bought and sold and um, started and shuttered um, at an alarming rate. So this is an example. Um, news applications and data journalism has a long history, um, but sort of the modern history of it um, maybe started in the early 2000s. And a lot of early data journalism projects were built in Flash. <laughs> and a lot of them are completely broken. That was one from the Washington Post, sorry. Um, ProPublica is, is building a lot of these types of websites and working on a lot of these types of stories. This is an example of a um, ProPublica news application. It's a workers' comp thing. How much, how does workers comp, um, how do those payouts differ from state to state? And they have this nice data visualization where kind of the appendage is larger depending on um, related to the compensation if you get more compensation um, for an arm or a finger. And then in, in current web archiving technology, none of that kind of dynamic, none of those dynamic elements um, are captured. So that's kind of just a little bit of um, an example of what this problem looks like in practice um, and, and the issue we're trying to, trying to um, address. So um, the solution that we are putting forward um, on our grant team is number one, we're trying to convince newsrooms that libraries are part of the solution, a big part of the solution. Um, as, as, as things are currently, there is no um, systematic way to get this content from newsrooms into libraries. There are pipelines for other types of content, um, more traditional 
news stories, um, but there isn't any sort of pipeline for this, um, for these dynamic news data journalism stories. So um, that's one thing that we'd like to address is trying to um, convince newsrooms to let us help them <laughs> to capture and archive and preserve their works. Um, so how would libraries do this? Um, part of the issue is that there is no technological tool that could currently do this at scale. Um, there's only really web recorder and um, web, web recorder doesn't have an automated an automated uh, version that could be used for news applications. They have something really cool that they've rolled out for Twitter, Facebook, I think Instagram, some really great social media tools. Um, but these data journalism sites are very um, bespoke. So there isn't currently anything that can do this yet. So um, our team has been working on an emulation-based web archiving tool. And this is where the IMLS funding came in. Um, so we were awarded a grant to build an extension to RepoZip, um, which is that reproducibility tool that is, has been in development for um, almost a decade now. Um, and this was uh, last year that we worked on this grant. So it's a different type of archiving process. It's emulation-based archiving, which means that the newsroom would be the newsrooms would be the first step in the archiving process. So, um, so it's a different approach to web archiving for sure. It's not for the whole internet. <laughs> um, it's really only for these high fidelity captures that you'd need for um, websites that have this back end databases. Um, also digital humanities projects really fall into this category of sites that can't be archived with traditional archiving. So um, RepoZip Web is the tool that we've built and it's based on um, RepoZip and Web Recorder. It's kind of a mashup of those two things. Um, how does RepoZip work? Um, it packs up the necessary data files, libraries, environment, et cetera, required to reproduce an experiment. And then you can then take that RepoZip bundle and open, unpack it and reproduce it anywhere in time. So this is kind of the packing and unpacking um, process, the RepoZip bundle, and then you can, uh, the RepoZip bundle has generated on uh, a Linux server, and then you can unpack it um, on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Here is kind of a diagram of the tracing and packing workflow. Um, for time considerations, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on some of these technical aspects, because I'm hoping to get, um, to share uh, some, some video demos with you all today. And then the second step is unpacking and replaying. Again, I, I won't spend a ton of time on this, but um, uh, I believe the slides are gonna be available so folks can um, kind of take a look at this later. So this is what we've built um, that's added into that process, the RepoZip web extension. And um, it just kind of adds a preservation bundle and a work file um, to the RepoZip package. Um, because the thing that was missing with, with RepoZip, the reason why we couldn't just use RepoZip as it existed um, to capture dynamic websites was that it didn't capture a lot of the remote front end files, um, like cascading style sheets and, and uh, other, other types of files. So um, the work file that we add is what addresses this. Um, so I believe we have time for maybe two of our demo videos. Um, one minute while I share a different screen. Okay, so um, I hope everybody is able to see this demo screen now. Yes, great. Um, please, please let me know in the chat if this isn't uh, playing, but this is an example of um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I wanted to show you a different screen first. This is an example of the packing process. So uh, this is all command line at the moment. Um, we don't have a graphic user interface um, for this. It's very much uh, a prototype, what we've built. But this is an example of uh, the RepRZip Reb prototype tool um, packing up a um, ProPublica news application that's called Dollars for Docs. And you can see that it's running this command. And it just kind of runs through. It builds the work at some point as well. And then now I'm going to show you again replay. Um, so this is RepZip playback. And you can see that you can, so we've captured the dynamic website, Dollars for Docs. We created um, an RPZ bundle. And then this is an example of turning off the Wi Fi and then reopening that bundle. And you can see that the news application works fine. You can interact with it. And um, you, can, you can bring up those interactive elements that uh, a traditional, like, uh, that a traditional web archiving um, would not have been able to do. Like in, um, in like a web archive capture, internet archive capture, um, those, when you try and query the database from the website, it doesn't, it doesn't work, of course. Okay, great. So um, I'm just gonna pause my share and go back to my presentation a second. Okay, great. Okay. Sorry, thanks for everybody's patience on the screen sharing. Um, so, um, so this is the tool that we've built, RepRZip Web. Um, I hope that demo worked out well. Um, this, is, this slide just talks a little bit more about um, why we feel this is a good approach. It's well bundled, it's generalizable, it's future proofed. I realize I'm at my time, so I'm just gonna kind of hurry through these final slides. Um, there are some limitations to the prototype. There's really a lot of work that we have yet to do, um, to do on this. And we're hoping to get a little more funding to further that work. Um, that's part of our next steps. Um, and that's, that's about it. Thank you all so much um, for your time and attention. Uh, and Please let us know, test out our prototype, and um, share your feedback with us.